back to the next video in this video i will show you how to use redux toolkit for state management inside your nextjs application so i have this nextjs application running i have two buttons one called update one called return to initial state if i just pay attention to this text if i quickly reload this here you can see the text has been changed from to trying so previously as you can see like it was idle then it immediately changed to trying now if i click on update here you can see it has changed to calling if i click on return to initial state it again changes to idle so uh, that's what we will be looking into i have created a very simple example but this is very powerful because you can use this in all types of state management let's get started so firstly i have this uh, nextjs application created the first thing which you have to do is you will have to install two dependencies redux js toolkit and react redux so just do npm install at the rate redux js toolkit and uh, react dash redux once this two uh, dependencies installed firstly you will have to create this lib folder which is inside the src folder inside that first create uh, this a folder called features inside feature i have created a folder called call status now here all our reducers will reside so inside the features folder all our reducers will reside so i have one reducer called call status that's why i have created one slice for it suppose if you have a second uh, reducer called send sms then you will create some separate folder you will create a separate slice for it okay so I have, for now i have just kept it simple one reducer one slice and here you can see so uh, now it will depend on you uh, what should be the state uh, what all different states that particular reducer should have so in my case i have just kept it simple like one variable of status and its value would be string so that's what i have defined over here now what should be the initial state so for me the initial state should be idle but in your case it should be it can be null empty string undefined it could be true false value uh, the, if you are passing true false then you will have to use boolean data type over here something like that okay then we create a slice we just give it some name call status give whatever name you feel like pass our initial status then we have to create reducers now i need two reducers okay but here you can write n number of reducers like each reducer corresponds to one method now i have one method called update call status uh, so which if you remember in uh, which gets called when I call the uh, when I click the update status button over here update button Okay, so for update call status. I need some input parameter uh, from uh, From uh, whoever is calling that particular method. I need an input parameter So the state variable is common for everything if you see get initial state here also I'm passing the state state is mandatory uh, Okay, but for input parameter you have to provide an action now this payload action now here what type of an input parameter you are passing so i'm just passing string so this data type would change depending on what type of input you are passing and now i just want to update this particular state which we have defined so for that you can just do state dot status equal to action dot payload okay so that's how our status would get updated now if i want to just return to initial state i can just create another method method and just call, call return initial state now here uh, i'm just uh, getting all the actions which we have defined inside our reducers uh, like all the reducers which we have defined inside our so update call status is one action get initial state is another action so we are just uh, passing all these things and getting it over here and we are just exporting our particular reducer okay once we do that uh, we'll have to go to store.ts so we here we have to create a file now uh, to be honest with you like i have just copy pasted all this code from the documentation over here there is a lot of boilerplate code which don't which we honestly don't have to know all about it so here everything is copied from documentation the only important thing which you have to change is this part this import part whatever is your reducer name or slice name and this you would have to write it over here if you have multiple slices you can write something like this but for me i just have one slice so i can write it like this only this part will change everything else and this import everything else i have just copied it from docs and this is boilerplate code which you have to write 
now this said so this this is done for store.ts then is hooks.ts again i have just copy pasted it from the docs again this is like boilerplate code which you have to write just copy paste all this code if you want to know more obviously you can read the docs but my job is to make things as simple as possible not dwell into unnecessary things but yeah it's good idea to know about all this stuff as well uh, and here inside app we have to create this store provider dot is again copy paste everything from the docs now this use client is a next year's thing which we have to write so again i have just copy pasted everything from this will remain same for you as well uh, irrespective of what kind of reducer you are making now we have to use this store provider now again now where to use it depends on you so for me suppose i want a uh, state management for this particular page.tx that's why i have used it over here as a component uh, or as a context so here i have just wrapped my child component inside store provider now if you want to access uh, that particular reducer inside home then you will have to wrap uh, the parent of home inside store store provider okay you are getting you can't access uh, the uh, reducer over here because uh, the reducer can be only accessed by the child component it uh, now if you want the home component to access the reducer wrap home components parent component inside store provider so that is the logic <coughs> but uh, what i feel is that don't wrap the uh, entire uh, the root layout uh, inside the store provider because everything would be re-rendered re 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 when state changes so uh, make sure that you are only wrapping uh, this inside the parent component whose child component really require this particular state management thing and here i have just created a component called my component if you go over here now here i have just imported our reducers from slice i have imported all these hooks which we require and i have also imported use effect i have initialized our store i have initialized uh, our value like this value will help us to get the status which we have defined it over here status slice so this will help us to get the status so that's why i have defined this value over here and i have defined state state dot call status but if you have some other reducer you can use instead of call status you can use that and here i have used dispatch which will help us to uh, update our state now uh, there are two ways of updating state you can either use the store so inside use effect i am immediately updating the state so here i am as you can see i am calling update call status method which we have defined over here and I'm, it takes a string input so i am passing the string input over here but typically i would won't recommend using the store so it's better to update state using something like this just use dispatch so i'll just update this as well i don't feel comfortable using the store and you can just comment this out as well uh, and here you can see you can update status like this as well if i want to update if i want to uh, call some other method you can just call dispatch get initial state which we had defined over here as well which does not take any input and if i want to constantly watch for this particular value like what this state is currently here as you can see i have used this value variable with the help of this value variable because it is calling state dot call status i can immediately track status over here so that's how i'm doing just to show you guys the output again quickly refresh this here you can see idle got converted to trying because we, we have updated the state inside use effect and if i click on the update button it is updated to calling if i click on return to initial state it goes back to idle so yeah that's it thank you for watching bye